worship for Sunday, December the 6th, 2020, the second Sunday of Advent. John the Baptizer calls people to repent, to clear the decks, to completely reorder their lives so that nothing gets in the way of the Lord's coming. The reading from Isaiah gives the context for this radical call, the assurance of forgiveness that encourages us to repent, the promise that the coming one will be gentle with the little ones. Isaiah calls us all to be heralds with John, to lift up our voices fearlessly and say, see, your God is coming. We say it to one another in worship, in order to say it with our lives, in a world in need of social justice and peace. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various places, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. We acknowledge with gratitude and respect that we are on the traditional land of the neutral, Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples who've cared for it for thousands of years. More recently, the Haldeman Proclamation of 1784 granted a tract six miles on either side of the Grand River from its source to Lake Erie to the Six Nations Haudenosaunee of the Grand River. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cambridge, Ontario, and I'm glad to have you join us for worship today. This year, our Christmas Eve worship video will include Holy Communion. You're welcome to take part at home as you watch the Christmas Eve video by having ready the elements such as bread and wine. Thank you to our Minister of Music, Katrina Lowe, for recording a prelude and postlude for us today. Thank you also to our reader for today, Josh Hyde. Offering envelopes for 2021 are now available at the church. If you have a key, you're welcome to help yourself to your envelopes, which are on a table in the secretary's office. If you don't have a key, please phone or email the church office to arrange a pickup time. When you get your envelopes, we'd appreciate it if you could also take envelopes of friends and family to deliver. If you find that you need someone to talk to, or if you need any assistance, please email me or phone me at the church office and I will help. At whatever time and location you are accessing this, thank you for doing so. It is good to be together in whatever way possible in this time of physical distancing. We continue now with worship. In this season of Advent, this time of transition and beginning, of expectation and deep, deep longing, we turn to the Holy Trinity, source of life and hope, in whose name we gather. Amen. Through the water of creation and cleansing, through the word of promise and welcome, we are immersed in the death and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth. We offer our praise and thanksgiving for the gift of baptism. Gracious and loving one, creator of all, we give thanks for the water which surrounds us flows within us, falls from the sky to nourish the earth, gathers in pools and lakes, streams and rivers to support life and provide cleansing. Hear us as we pray. Come to us, creator of life. Gracious and loving one, word of life, we give thanks for Jesus, who washed dirty feet and blinded eyes, who washes away disgrace and division, who welcomes us in the flowing promise and the hope of new creation. Hear us as we pray. Come among us in the new. Gracious and loving one, spirit of reconciliation, we give thanks for your promised presence, the assurance of companionship on our journey, the calling to work for justice and peace, and the quiet anticipation of the coming reign of God. Hear us as we pray. Come and fill us, Holy Spirit. Gracious and loving one, one God, we wait hopefully, we wait expectantly, we wait joyfully for your promised dawning, begun, continued, and completed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Come and fill us, Holy Spirit. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm so very glad that you're here with me today, and I know that you're bringing sunshine and joy wherever you are. The four Sundays before Christmas are called Advent, and during those four weeks we look forward to the coming of Christmas as we watch and wait for Jesus coming into our lives today. As we look forward to Christmas, we have a kind of backwards countdown. Now, you all know how a regular countdown goes, say when a rocket is about to go off. Let's do a regular countdown together. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lift off, we have lift off. So if a regular countdown begins at 10 and goes down to one, how do you think a backwards countdown might start? Well, this backwards countdown starts at one, goes up to four, and then finishes with Christmas. So it's like this, one, two, three, four, Christmas. So say that with me. One, two, three, four, Christmas. And to help, help us keep track of where we are in the backwards countdown, we have an Advent wreath. Today, the countdown goes to two. Next Sunday, we'll add three and light three candles. So the more candles are lit, the closer it is to Christmas. And each week we'll sing a verse from a hymn, Light One Candle, Go Watch for Messiah. It's number 240 and on the screen. Today we'll sing the second stanza. Light two candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. He shall feed the flock like a shepherd. Gently lead them home. The first reading, Good News of God's Coming to a People in Exile. In grand, flowing, poetic lines, the prophet announces that the exile of God's people in Babylon is over. God will deliver Israel and will care for her as a shepherd cares for the sheep. This word can be trusted because the only enduring reality in life is the word of God. A reading from Isaiah. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All the people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God 
will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The Word of the Lord. John appears from the wilderness. The Gospel of Mark does not begin with a story of Jesus' birth, but with the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. The Sermon. Comfort. When you are overcome by all the threats and changes of life, or when you're down in the dumps, what is it that lifts your spirit? Where do you turn for comfort? A special food such as macaroni and cheese, or maybe scalloped potatoes? Or for those with a sweet tooth, perhaps a double chocolate fudge ice cream? Where do you turn for comfort? Maybe it's nature that soothes you as you go out for a walk, or watch a beautiful sunset or soak up the sun on a summer beach. Perhaps you have a special corner in your home that tends to foster a sense of peace. Where do you turn for comfort? I'm hesitant to admit it, and my family laughs at this, but something which brings me comfort, especially in the Christmas season, are Hallmark Christmas movies. Now, I know it's said that these all too predictable movies all really have only a single plot, which involves the most unlikely people at the beginning of the movie finally coming together and forming a romantic relationship just in the nick of time about five minutes before the movie's end. Because the plots of Hallmark Christmas movies are all the same, more discerning people turn the channel. But I have to confess that the plot, which moves from a seemingly impossible situation to a happy ending with all the problems resolved, 
comforts me. Where do you turn for comfort? In today's first reading, God instructs the prophet, comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God, speak tenderly to Jerusalem. These words were first spoken to God's people when they were in exile. Dennis Sanders, who writes for the Christian Century, notes that it had not been a good time in the life of many Jews. A century before, the northern kingdom of Israel had fallen to the Assyrians. Many people were taken away to live in a foreign land, never to return again. Others became refugees who streamed to the southern kingdom. And then the southern kingdom fell to the new superpower, the Babylonians. Again, some people were forced to live in exile, while others were stuck in the ruins of post-apocalyptic Judah. Israel was gone. Judah was gone. The king was gone. The temple was gone. Everything they once knew was gone forever. They sat there in Babylon, wondering if it would ever come back. Isn't it amazing how many parallels there are between ancient Israel and our current COVID situation? To all these changes, losses, and fears, God responds with the word comfort. Comfort, comfort my people. God wants the people back. The comfort, the promise, the exiled Israelites were going home. God would provide a way from Babylon back to Jerusalem, from bondage to freedom, from fear to joy, notes Bishop Larry Kokendorfer, Bishop of Alberta and the Territories. The prophet Isaiah is instructed to speak to the people about a God who comforts, a God who yearns to gather us in a warm embrace, a God who welcomes, names, and claims us as children of the water and the word in our baptism. Where do you turn for comfort? The prophet Isaiah proclaims that we can turn to the God of love, acceptance, and forgiveness, the God who works for happy endings. Half a century later, the gospel writer of Mark uses words from today's first reading to open his gospel, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. And then John the baptizer appears, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Now, we don't normally associate repentance with being good news, nor do we normally associate repentance with bringing comfort, but Mark does. So Professor Richard Swanson, who teaches religion at Augustana College in South Dakota, suggests that we should imagine John the baptizer's words about repentance as tender, kind, loving, and comforting. John the baptizer is offering people a chance to be done with all the things that have bound them to anger and resentment, an opportunity to become free from sin, freed from our separation from God. In today's Gospel reading, Mark introduces his book by saying the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. And then Mark almost immediately launches into writing about forgiveness. Forgiveness is the reason that God came to earth, for the forgiveness of sin, as we say in the communion liturgy, to remove the separation between us and God. Forgiveness is the good news of Jesus Christ. Forgiveness reunites us with God. Forgiveness is the comfort God gives. And Mark himself knew all about being forgiven. Mark knew all about a broken relationship being healed. After having accompanied Paul and Barnabas on their first missionary journey, Mark had bailed out partway through the second trip. Whatever his reasons had been for abandoning Paul and Barnabas on that trip, Mark was hoping, hoping to join them again later for their third journey, as they planned to revisit the mission congregations they had previously started. Now, Barnabas was willing to give Mark the benefit of the doubt and allow him to join in that third missionary journey. But Paul objected to taking along the one who had failed them. So sharp was the disagreement between Barnabas and Paul that they parted ways. Barnabas took Mark with him 
and Paul took Silas. But it seems that the judgment of Barnabas was a good one. Later, when Paul was writing from prison, he reported that Mark was again with him. In another letter, Paul requested that Mark be brought to him in prison. Mark was very important in early Christianity. His home was a central meeting place for the early Christians in Jerusalem. And a very old tradition says that it was Mark's house that was the location of the Last Supper. Mark was so important in early Christianity that Simon Peter referred to Mark as his son. And that close relationship made possible the writing of Mark's Gospel, which is said to have been based on the recollections of St. Peter himself. All of this, the mission work, the comforting friendship with St. Paul, and even the Gospel of St. Mark itself, all of this became possible because Mark had been given a second chance by God and by Barnabas. Christianity is the religion of the second chance, and Mark stands as the leading symbol of this good news. To know God is to know the comfort of forgiveness and reunion with God. That's the good news of Jesus Christ. We can take great comfort in God's gracious mercy, pardon, amnesty, and forgiveness. Whenever we fail, no matter how much we have disappointed or hurt another, God forgives. No matter how much we have been let down or hurt by another, or even by ourselves, we too are called to be Barnabas-like and God-like in our forgiveness of the other, and even in forgiving ourselves. We are blessed, blessed by a God who comforts us with forgiveness and love. And we are blessed by a God who makes a difference in our lives. Like the plot of a Hallmark Christmas movie, God takes seemingly impossible situations and works to bring happy endings. As we draw nearer to Christmas, John the Baptizer reminds us that God came to earth in order to forgive us, to move us closer to God. May this season of Advent be a time in which we know the comfort of God's forgiveness, the comfort of being moved closer to God, and the comfort of God's work toward happy endings. Thanks be to God. And the people said, Amen.
God of power and might. Comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need as we pray saying, hear us, O God, and responding, your love is great. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O God, your love is great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it needs your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Move us to care for those hurt by global climate change, especially the poor. Hear us, O God, your love is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking social justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and social injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. Teach us how to end discrimination and to value diversity. At this festival of Hanukkah, end the world's anti-Semitism and bring peace to Jerusalem. Bring political parties into helpful conversation with each other. Hear us, O God, your love is great. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth. Make even the disparities between your people. Sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O God, your love is great. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend those who are sick or struggling with depression. Be with all who are facing the coronavirus. Protect the vulnerable. Heal the sick. Embrace the dying. Sustain medical workers. Help us to share a vaccine. End this scourge and gather all people into your healing embrace. Hear us, O God. Your love is great. Compassionate God, 31 years ago, 14 female engineering students were murdered at Montreal's L'Ecole Polytechnique in an act of gender-based violence. We also commemorate missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, trans women, and every woman in Canada and across the world whose lives have been impacted by gender-based violence. Be with women in their struggle for equality and support them in their many roles of loving service and compassionate care. Hear us, O God. Your love is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work, especially St. Nicholas and his care for children. Make their generous lives an example for all. Hear us, O God. Your love is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share that peace.
receive the blessing. Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.